The blue shell is the most hated item from all of Mario Kart. Players from around the world have asked Nintendo to remove the blue shell from the game. And yet, Nintendo haven't. And that is because in 1996, the blue shell actually solved one of Mario Kart's biggest problems. Here's why Nintendo will never get rid of the blue shell. The original Super Mario Kart has some problems, namely that it doesn't feel very fair. If you fall behind in a race, it can be really difficult to catch up. And it doesn't help that the CPU characters have a huge advantage over you, the player. Let me explain how Super Mario Kart's AI works. At the start of a Grand Prix, the computer players are all given distinct roles to play, behaviours that they must follow whatever happens. There's one very fast character, one fast, one medium, one slow, and three very slow. And the computer players will do everything in their power to stay exactly where they are in that list. In other words, the outcome of each race is entirely predetermined. But what about you, the player? Well, you start right at the back and you have to force your way through that predetermined list, desperately trying to knock the characters off their set course. It's not about how well you drive, it's about how well you disrupt the computer players from their set order. But those computer characters don't just sit there waiting to be overtaken. They use items to try and stop you. And this is where the game goes from unfair to downright cheating. You see, the computer players have access to items that you don't. Like Princess Peach will throw these poison mushrooms onto the track. But there are no poison mushrooms available in the item panels. Even if you pick Princess Peach as your character, you can't use the poison mushrooms. But it gets worse. Not only do the computer players have access to items you can't use, they can use as many of those items as they want, whenever they want. That's right, computer players can spawn infinite items, even if they've never driven over an item panel. So it's no surprise that Super Mario Kart's computer players feel totally unfair. It's because they really do cheat. Now, in spite of the game's unfair AI, Super Mario Kart went on to become a huge success for Nintendo. And so, a few years later, developers at the company began working on a sequel, called Mario Kart 64. Now, the developers' focus this time around was to fix the big problem with the original game, that if you fell behind, it was really, really hard to catch up again. Now, there were lots of ways the developers tried to make sure that anybody could win a race up until the last minute. The CPU characters, for instance. According to the game's director, Hideki Kono, the enemy AI is so much better than before. Now, better doesn't necessarily mean fairer. The CPU in Mario Kart 64 will absolutely still cheat. In fact, a YouTube channel called Super Luigi Kart ran an experiment to prove that the computers do cheat. Normally, in Mario Kart, the camera follows you, the player. But in this video, the camera is instead following one of the CPUs, Luigi. When Luigi gets far enough away from the human player that he can't be seen anymore, he'll disappear. And look at what happens to his speed when that happens. Suddenly, he starts going much faster and navigating corners more tightly, too. So, in Mario Kart 64, computer players only follow the same rules as the player when the player can see them. As soon as the player can't see them, they can go faster and they can drive better. But this cheating, as you might put it, is all in service of the developer's goals, to make sure anyone could win the race up until the final seconds. Unfortunately, there was one big obstacle in the developer's way, the Nintendo 64 console itself. You see, Mario Kart 64 was a processor hog. Sure, Super Mario Kart might have pushed the SNES to its limits, but Mario Kart 64 went well beyond them. Huge 3D courses, complicated physics, and lots and lots of character sprites really took their toll on the N64. So, some sacrifices were made to get the game running. Like the frame rate, Super Mario Kart runs at a smooth 60 frames a second, while Mario Kart 64 only runs at 30. But add in a second player and the cracks begin to show. 
certain graphical effects like snow had to be toned down a little to keep the game's performance consistent, and complex geometry like the train from Calamari Desert was simplified a little. In this case, the five carriages were chopped down to just one. On the whole though, the game kept itself running steadily and consistently. But Shigeru Miyamoto had a request for the programmers. He wanted them to add races with four different players. At first, he was told that's impossible, but eventually the programmers did manage to pull it off. Their solution was to slash everything. The frame rate was now down to 20 frames a second. The clouds in the background layers, these were all removed. Frappe Snowland had its titular snow taken out. The trees were gone from Moo Moo Farm, and the train from Calamari Desert now had no carriages at all. Oh, and on top of all that, the game's music stopped playing. <laughs> but even with all of these changes, the Nintendo 64 console couldn't pull off something really important. According to the game's director, having eight racers on the screen all the time didn't work all that well. So, because the processing power didn't exist, we weren't able to create the racing environment we wanted. In other words, the game's developers wanted to create races that were so close that anybody could win them. But the Nintendo 64 console had trouble displaying eight races on screen at once, which meant that close races were impossible. Or were they? You see, the solution to this problem was a little thing called the blue shell. So, if you don't know, the blue shell is an item that seeks out the player in first place and attacks them with a huge explosion. And this blue shell solved pretty much every problem the developers faced. If one player was lagging behind, they could use the blue shell to attack the first place player, helping themselves to catch up. And if a player was way out in front of all the other racers, well, the blue shell could drag them back into the battle. This item turned the races from the original Mario Kart, where if you fell behind you could never catch up, into races where anybody could win and no one was safe. In the words of the game's director, Hideki Kono, it would enable even whoever was in the back of the pack to still want to continue the race, to still want to keep going, something that would allow them to still have that feeling. Now, ever since Mario Kart 64, the blue shell has been included in every single Mario Kart game that Nintendo has created, and it's become hated by a lot of players. You're about to win the race, the finish line is in sight, and suddenly a blue shell comes along to crush your dreams. It's no surprise that some people find the blue shell frustrating. So why won't Nintendo get rid of it? Well, in an interview, Hideki Kono explained that every time Nintendo makes a Mario Kart game, the developers step back, take a look at the game's balance, and decide which items they include. Which means that, so far, the blue shell has continued being useful for balancing out the game to achieve the goal of races where anybody can win. But don't take it from me, let me read out a quote from Kosuke Yabuki, the man who directed Mario Kart 8. Something I personally really consider is the human emotion element of the play experience. So, for example, playing Mario Kart, if you have something that feels unfair, or makes you frustrated, or makes you angry, everyone is different in that respect. What you will feel is unfair might be different to someone else. As far as possible, we want to avoid those feelings of frustration, but because everyone is different and it's an emotive thing, you can't pin it down with a set formula. Ultimately, in the longer term, although everyone might feel on one particular day that they're so frustrated that they're not going to play any more Mario Kart today, keeping the experience enjoyable enough so that you might feel like that today, but the next day, the next week, you'll still go back to Mario Kart and still enjoy it. We're always experimenting with what new elements to include or what elements can be removed. We have tried or we are trying to see what the game's like without the blue shell. When we've experimented without the blue shell, actually, it feels like something's missing, like there's something not quite enough in the game. So for now, we've kept it in. You know, sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes in life you have something where you feel that's not right and that's frustrating, but I think things are more interesting like that, with the blue shells of life. 
Hey, this is Thomas. Thanks for watching my video. As always, if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel. And a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping make videos like this possible. Alright, I'll see you next week. Bye!